So you have two coils connected together. Wow, miss, I haven't learned magnetic field there. Why got coil? It's okay. Paper 5, if you know how to do the experiment, you don't need to know the theory. The coils are in vertical and parallel to each other. When the coils are connected to power supply, there's a magnetic field. It need to be AC ah, or DC. Just AC lah. Magnetic field ma. need not induction. So it does help that you know theory, but it's not like super mass. It is suggested that the magnetic flux density, whoa, what is changing? Of the point X is related to the radius by this some relationship. Okay, so we are trying to measure the magnetic flux density here. The coil will have magnetic field, ma. How does it look like? I don't know. Maybe you learn the chapter, you know. But let me tell you, it looks something like this. It's the Helmholtz coil. Something like that. But I am only to draw also can one. Okay, so we want to measure B at X so that we can study this equation. Let's go on a bit more. Do you design a lab experiment that uses a Hall probe to test the relationship between B and R? Okay, that's all we need to know to brainstorm. You need to measure B, you need to measure R. R is what? Radius of the coil. Mm, how to measure radius? Use ruler. Okay, then not so bad. Like. You can use ruler, put ruler and measure. But how do you measure B? That's something we have not done before. Well. The key is Hall probe. So this one, your takeaway is know how to use a Hall probe. Just, I mean the steps to use a Hall probe. So Hall probe, how does the Hall probe look like? We want to measure B here. Hall probe looks kind of like your phone actually. Here is the Hall probe. Ah, why fly until so far away? This is a Hall probe. It's just a piece of like a ruler, like that long, long thing. But the actual Hall probe probe sensor is the tiny little square on this plate. So when you have a magnetic field kind of like passing through the Hall probe, a voltage will be generated across the two terminals of the Hall probe. So what you do there, first step, you of course need to connect. Uh, connect to a voltmeter. Maybe you show uh, 5.0 mu volt connect. So connect Hall probe to voltmeter. So how do you use a Hall probe? These are the steps that you need to know to write in any kind of experiment in paper 5. Step 1. You need to connect, of course. That's, that's the thing. You need to connect to measure something. So you read a B, you measure a V, H on the screen. You look at the screen, what's the number, and then that's it. So after that, you need to do calibration. So step one, calibrate your Hall probe. You see, Hall, if I read a VH of, let's say, 5 mu volt, actually, what is the magnetic field strength? Uh? How do you know? <laughs> we don't know. I mean, you can calculate, but we don't know. In experiment, we don't know the theory. So you need to calibrate, law. that's the easy way, without doing all this theoretical calculation. So how to calibrate? You need to take a known magnetic field, a magnetic field that you know, lah. like you say, oh, this one uniform field I know is going to be 0 0.5 millitesla. And you measure and you see the reading on the Hall probe. So calibrate with known field. This is the sentence that you need to write in paper 5. That's all. How to calibrate? You don't know, never mind. You just say calibrate with known field. What that means is, you have Hall voltage for a certain B. If you know 0 0.5 millitesla is going to be 5 mu volt, then you have one data point, you can plot a line now. Yay, so this is the line for this particular Hall probe. Then you can take the Hall probe and go anywhere, go cafe, go to any other place in the world. You just stick it in a magnetic field, you see a reading, let's say 10 mu volt, What's the magnetic field strength? Uh? Oh, I already calibrate. I know, got calibration curve. Like, oh, nah. this one will be uh, 0 0.8 millitesla. Okay, so the, prob the, the idea is once you know with a known field, you can just plot a graph and you know, oh, for if I see this Hall voltage, that means the magnetic flux density is this strong. So step one, calibrate. Just write that if you're not sure how exactly to calibrate. Step two. The Hall probe must work in a certain way. One. So you need to rotate Hall probe until the Hall voltage is maximum. 
What does that mean? Ah, here we go. Let's put this up here, this picture. So the hall probe has a very specific way to work. If you want your hall probe to work properly, okay, and consistently when you're doing measurement, you must make sure that the black, the black sensor, the, the, the semiconductor, so this black sensor, must be perpendicular to the magnetic field. However that looks like. I don't care. Lah. If it's like that, then like that. Lah. Okay. So the side view is like this. Must be perpendicular. When it's perpendicular, then you will have a maximum Hall voltage reading. So you, if you're not sure you're perpendicular, because we cannot see my in real life, now I draw the B. In real life, how are you going to see? Maybe the thing is curved like that. Leh. So you need to rotate, rotate, rotate until you get, oh, maximum reading. Leh. Okay, it means perpendicular. Okay. So rotate this guy, rotate. This picture is shown. Rotate. Until you find, oh, I think this is the maximum reading. Okay, okay, okay. This is the position. Lock there. Now it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. Leh. So this is the condition to use the hall probe. You must rotate because your, your B must be perpendicular to the probe. This is when there's maximum hall voltage. So rotate. First step, calibrate. Second step, rotate. So you rotate until it's perpendicular to a certain field. Now the last step is you rotate already. Then what are you going to do? Let go of your hall probe, it drop down on the table. No, when you rotate, you find perpendicular. Then you must secure or clamp down or use whatever tool the angle of hall probe. You hold by hand, cannot. You must lock it down. Then you do experiment. Okay, so what are the steps? Recall a bit. I zoom out so we can see. Step one, I mean, of course, connect to voltmeter. Step one, calibrate. Step two, rotate. Step three, clamp it down. These three things you can write down now uh, or draw it out. You get quite a lot of marks already. You just need to know how to use a hall probe. Okay, so hall probe is like your phone. You stick it into the magnetic field, it throws you a voltage that you can measure and you know how strong the magnetic field is. So how do you draw a diagram? Okay, I'll give you a tip. Any kind of experiment that got B inside, uh, means you have to use Hall Probe, means you have to draw something like this. So, Hall Probe first. You need to draw a Hall Probe, maybe I use a side view, something like this. There, so this is my Hall Probe, I'm going to label all Probe. Hall prop is floating, got ghost holding. Uh, no, I don't think we want the ghost to be holding the hall prop. So you must include your retort stand. Cannot be floating, ma. I got such thing one. So include retort stand, no? Okay, retort stand. Here also got one more boss. Okay, retort stand cannot float, right? Okay, retort stand on the table. Ma, ah, nah, that only can. Clamp secured. Okay, next thing. Your coil also floating. Ah. Hello, cannot. Ayya, go so much ghost in the lab one man cannot be la. Every time I see people do paper fire, why got so much ghost? All these things can float by itself one. No. You need something to hold these things. So you guess you could put a clamp here to hold the coils as well. Say so miss, wouldn't the clamp fall down? Look very unsteady. Okay, la, unsteady, you put another one here though. If you feel very unsteady, nah. Everything clamped down, looks good. Okay. Number two, your voltmeter to measure the hall probe. Where is it? Ah? Oh, need to draw voltmeter. Ah. Okay, okay. So you draw two wires from your hall probe to voltmeter. So wherever it got magnetic field experiment, you want to measure B, you just draw something like this. So clamp the hall probe, clamp, draw the voltmeter. Lastly, ah, this one very steady. I see very scared. Maybe I add a G clamp label. G clamp. Okay, the coil uh, got power by itself one. Uh. Suddenly, suddenly can appear electricity. No lah. Need current. Oh, so put a battery power source. Put the air meter because we need to measure current. Ah, then current flow liao, inside the coil, then got magnetic field. Okay, think of one dangerous thing here. What's the safety precaution? Whenever you have magnetic experiment, electromagnet like this, oh, 
got very large current in the course one, you know. Can get very hot, you know. So safety precaution, uh, please be very careful when you're doing this. Don't touch the coils, hot coils. Also, if very high voltage or you could get electric shock. Eh? These are the dangers of this experiment. How do you make sure you are safe? Obviously, don't touch hot coils and electric shock, you wear rubber gloves. Oh. So whenever there's electromagnet, this, this coil is called electromagnet. Use electricity to make a magnetic field. There's hot coils and there's electric shocks. Please be careful. Mention those in your uh, in your safety precaution as well. Uh, we don't get to do this in lab because they don't have enough of this equipment. Okay. So when you go check the mask scheme, okay, when you go check this out, MJ14, P52, you will see lots of things about hall probe. So let's quickly scan through before we call it a day. See, anything related to hall probe? Ah, ah label hall probe. No label. What is the rectangle there? Why suddenly got a rectangle? What is that? So it must label all probe. Um, what else? Anything hall probe? Ah, connect hall probe to voltmeter. That's how you read, ma. That's how you can measure the voltage of the hall probe. The hall probe will give you a voltage. Can you use voltmeter? Yeah, oh, which one also can. Anything? Hall probe? Oh, go one more leh. Calibrate hall probe. We have no magnetic flux density. That's all you need to say. So three marks just talking about the hall probe. How to use a hall probe. You can go look at all the mark schemes for these type experiments. Last one. Additional detail. I zoom out some more. What else got hall probe one? Ah? We look and see. Hall probe, hall probe. Ah! Hall probe at right angle to direction of magnetic field. Or adjust to obtain maximum reading. Oh, that's what we talk about. You must rotate because you must make sure hall probe is perpendicular to the field. Okay. Once you find the perpendicular, what you do? Oh, you must keep it perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. Clamp it down, set square, fix the rule, fix it to a ruler, optical bench, whatever. Lah, as long as you fix the hall probe down, especially if it's not moving. Anything else about hall probe, or is that it? Ooh, look at this. Re repeat and average. What? Repeat and average. Leh. So your hall probe, the black color thing is here. Maybe the magnetic field is going in this way. You will get a certain VH. Maybe let's say uh, 5 mu volt. Then you rotate the hall probe backwards. Now the black color thing is on this side. The magnetic field is still this direction. You will still get 5 mu volts, but you get negative 5 mu volts. So the direction will be different. So if you reverse, reverse, maybe this one is 5.1, so it's 5.2. You take average of both. Lor. So, so that's what they mean by you reverse your whole probe and average. Just rewrite. Lah. Rewrite, rewrite. 5.1 mu volt. So that's what this point means here. Reverse average. So you can say reverse take average, but you must say you reverse the hall probe. Okay, uh, so you see, uh, if you know how to use a hall probe, it doesn't matter if you don't know how the hall probe, why does it work that way. If you are curious, go check out the chapter 22.4. talks about why the hall probe works. But in experiment paper 5, you just need to know how to use it. So all these highlighted things, you can apply to all kinds of experiment that has, you have to measure B. So go and check it out. When you do more past year, you look at it, you're like, oh, yeah, there will be a lot of experiment in paper 5 set B where you got a chance to use a hall probe. This is an introduction to remind you of it. Okay, so remember hall probe, uh, step 1, step 2, step 3. Step 1, calibrate. Step 2, rotate. Step 3, clamp it down. Or secure it to something so you don't have to hold it with your hand. Uh. So when you guys look in your paper 5 set B, this is not in paper 5, this is not in your set, but you can go check it out. Write it down. MJ14, P52. Make sure you have no floating, no ghosts, please. There are no ghosts in the lab, so we don't want any floating apparatus. Floating ruler also cannot. Uh. Everything clamped down on the table. Now, in your the first one you encounter in your in your paper file set B is the U-shaped electromagnet. Eee, miss, look like transformer. Uh, don't care. We don't care. We just need to know there's a magnetic field at point P. So you're going to put your hall probe right here. 
to draw law hall probe, clamp down, must include the stand, include the retort stand, include the vote meter, same thing. Iron core, floating ah, then my lah, we clamp also lah, just in case. So you draw a smaller version of this iron core, you clamp it down. This one must connect to circuit, right? Oh yeah, oh. okay, connect to circuit. So connect to AC maybe, I don't know, or DC. You have to read the question lah, like that. Ah, then okay lah. If you're curious to know how the magnetic field looks like, it looks like this. Solenoid goes like circles. So your whole probe will be measuring at that particular line along this line. What is the magnetic flux density? So you apply all the same things, you'll be able to do this question. So yeah, there's a quite a few to measure B lah, so you will have practice in paper 5 set B, don't worry about it. This one will be only due in like, don't know which week lah, not this week. So can go check that out, look at the mask scheme, make sure you know how to use a hall probe or describe how to use a hall probe and you will be OK.